your name? Bert. Bert. Yes. Nice to meet you and wonderful to listen to your talks. Uh, it's very clear, and very beautiful. Um, so I have a question. Um, yes. I feel, I think I feel the self inside more and more and uh, the practices of surrender and, and Advaita Vedanta and help me a lot. Um, but when I go again in a material world and have to arrange a bus or a train or a hotel and um, conversations, I feel I take up a lot of luggage again. And through meditation and practice, I can let it go again and, and feel very blissful. Um, so how to handle the, the normal world, uh, the material world in this way? So when you speak about having taken up the practices of Advaita Vedanta and when you speak about feeling the self, what do you mean exactly? Can you describe it? Mm. It's like <clears throat> I feel I'm, I'm not this, I'm not that, I, I let go and I surrender, but also just feeling the love for, for God, for the Divine mm -hmm. and feeling it inside and without really attaching to my person, letting go of the person I think I am. And, and I feel some great space opening and when I go deep inside, I feel just very happy and, and even just to look at a blank wall can make me cry. And so it, it, it feels very beautiful and true in some ways. Uh, so can you tell me then why, when you look at a website where you have to book a bus, Mm -hmm. Why don't you feel the same joy? <laughs> it's like I have to push it through, it's like I have to <laughs> make something happen, you know? Like, like. The reason why you have this dichotomy is because the practices you undertake are actually taking you away from the reality of your material world. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the Neti Neti practice, no? Neti Neti is the practice of taking up the sadhana to say, I am not this, I am not that, I am not this. I am the Supreme Soul, for example. Mm -hmm. The realization that I am the Supreme Soul. Now, Neti Neti is not a practice. It is not a sadhana. Neti Neti is an is a realization which comes after sadhana has been undertaken for a long time. Mm -hmm. It happens as an experience. It is not a practice. That is, a, is an aberration in the Neo-Advaitin yes. paths. The idea that you can start a practice by actually conceptually telling yourself, I am not this, I am not that, I am not this, I am not that. Neti Neti is not a practice. I feel you should understand firstly this. If you take up Neti Neti as a practice, it leads to a detachment from the materiality of your system. So when you have to go and reserve that bus on a website or even, you know, do the mundane tasks like banking, there is such a rejection in the system because there is detachment from the materiality of your existence. Also, those who take up the practice of who am I? Who am I is not a practice, it is a realization along the path. It comes up as a fact along the path. So what happens is that when you start your, your spiritual journey with these questions, for example, who am I? or with the practice of Neti Neti, it gradually will lead you to this state you're in. Mm -hmm. Where you feel the self and you feel love, but this world is too demanding. Mm -hmm. I'm saying something very precise to you. All those practices which you undertake, which you have mentioned to me, are conceptual practices. They happen in the thinking. You know what I mean? 
Yes, I, I do also other practices. Uh, yes. Like also japa, uh, bhakti, yoga. Mm -hmm. uh, like, actually, my, my greatest love is really for the divine. So I feel like yes. every moment is spent for the divine. And, um, but it's harder to see it when I have to do practical things. Though they go quite well, you know, like I, I don't have difficulties to to make something happen, to arrange something, though I feel it, 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 it can be... That, that has to stop. That has to stop. Because if you are on a, on a journey of self-realization, on a path, it's not really a path or a journey, you know that. It's a moment-to-moment -moment experience. But if you are in this experience, there cannot be a dichotomy between the experience of the divine and the experience of the material world. Mm -hmm. It is one thing. So if I were to say to you, Pert, have you thought that you could be in the here and the now, without japa, without mantra for the moment, without meditations, without all of those things, but take this living as your meditation and be in the here and the now and start to feel the Antar Guru, the soul. When you were born, the Antar Guru took its place next to you, within you. It's like the soul, it's the Jivatma, it becomes the Antar Atman. Is it the heart? It's not the heart. This is a material entity, it's like a, it's an atom, it's like a, it's a soul, it's a solid thing. Mm -hmm. And it is that thing which impulses your actions in every moment. But because the ego grows and grows and grows, where did you grow up, which country? In Belgium. In Belgium, so it's Western Europe, desire, want. greedy capital, forcing all of you to grow up with desires, wants. All those desires that society has slapped onto you, demandings, desires, wantings, hopings, yearnings, all of that has grown into an ego, which is not you. But you have to take responsibility for your actions. So if you create a slim identity, instead of saying neti, 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 neti will come when the time is right. It comes anyways. But it is not a starting point. What if you were to say, I'm Bert, son of your mother's name? Linda. Linda, from... Ostar. Ostar. That I'm that Bert, and now I, in each moment, I am actually in a state of surrender to the soul and its impulse. If this action is emerging, I try to tune in to see, is this action emerging from the soul, or is it emerging from the ego? This is the practice and the sadhana. Now what happens, as you take up this sadhana more and more, you become more and more surrendered to the soul. And the soul is the final destination. It is not the heart, it is beyond everything. It is the supreme consciousness individualized in you as your soul, as the antar atman. So that is where you have to pierce through the ego and its creations and your inheritances, your genetic inheritances of fear of the soul. Because you have grown up in a culture which has taught you that the God is outside, the divine, bow down, outside, outside, outside. You have to transform all of that and move inward. And as you start to surrender to that soul, the ego recedes and the joyousness grows. And in that moment, the exercise of banking becomes as joyous as the exercise of Japa Mantra. Or simply in the banking, it is the soul that is doing it. This body is just an instrument of that divine. Now what happens as you become more and more an instrument, the entire body, with all its layers of consciousness, becomes divinized. You haven't been chanting and have been out in a cosmic experience, but you are here in a terrestrial, corporeal experience. 
there's a difference. Mm. So you become, you know, the very cells of your body become divinized. They become more conscious of themselves. The emotional part of your being becomes more divinized. You are no more a victim of the emotions, but a master of the emotions, which is necessary for this body to function as a servant of the truth. Then every action emanating from you is an action from the truth gradually. It doesn't happen immediately. It takes some time. But that key word surrender is the golden key to this continuous experience of the truth being the master. You surrender, you surrender, you surrender. So is it? So I pick up this glass, so... Is it coming from the truth? Is it... It feels like the ego. The ego's voice is louder, okay? Then I wait. This hand coming down, is it... It's coming from the truth. This hand coming up is coming from the ego. That is the sadhana of figuring out where your actions are coming from and bending down to your master, your soul. That is that ultimate love which you have to surrender to. It says somewhere no, on those placards, on those posters, surrender to love, that's what it means. Surrender to love which is the master of the being, which is a material reality. It is not an idea in the head, it is actually present. You can feel the impulse as you train yourself more and more. In the beginning you'll make mistakes, you'll go with the ego, thinking it's the truth, you'll go with, you know... And gradually you'll start to discern between what is the ego and what is the truth. This sadhana has been practiced by different people for 20 years and in the beginning I didn't didn't allow even a website or anything, because I said, it is a very new sadhana, such a precise sadhana, and until we know that it actually is happening, we will not try to make a big noise about it. But we are seeing increasingly people are feeling their souls in a material sense and they are operating from it in a material sense, not it's my heart, my heart wants me to go on a holiday. My soul wants me... To. The soul does not want anything. The soul never wants anything. It is the... silent, almost imperceptible source of impulse. Just impulse, impulse, impulse. The ego is loud and demanding and clamoring, insisting, pushing. No, 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 I have to eat this. That surrender is the step to the ultimate experience of love, which is the soul. So, it's always present inside. And when we're doing, as I understand it well, um, I want to check, is it... So yes, it's you can ask. ...being present inside and just feeling like the subtle push, but not like the loud noise of the mind. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. It's not about being present inside or outside. It is that this body is here. Mm -hmm. The attention is here. When you come and sit down in this room, okay, there are all these lights shining and so, so your attention is focused. Now, the same person if they are put outside over there, if the contours are really solid and the presence is real, then that same thing will be felt outside also. Not because this body is sitting on, a, on, a, on an asana and there are these lights blinding me, by the way, I can barely see any of you, but it's just presence. And anyone can attain this presence by being here and now and actually consulting with your master within. Of course it helps to take a guru, but who wants to take a guru? Because a guru is going to be very tough and 
slap you every time the ego starts to rear its head. So people don't necessarily want to deal with a guru, all right, then deal with your antar guru, go there at least. It's tougher because you don't have someone to point out the ego. You know what I mean? If I tell you, hey, Bert, you're very... this action of yours is surely emerging from ego, check it. You're not going to be so happy if I say it twenty-five times in a day. <laughs> so people are not so happy with gurus, but at least they can take the path inward and be their own guru and try to stop the ego from interfering with their with their daily actions. No? The sadhana of neti neti is not a sadhana, please. It'll just lead you to a loss of any kind of responsibility for any actions and the continuous feeling of detachment and not being able to correlate the material and the spiritual and act in 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 a non-dual way. It brings you into duality rather than into a non-dual experience. I know this sounds strange, but it is like that. It Can it not be as a way to check like when the voice of the mind gets loud, like, okay, but it's not this, like I should not listen to this. Yes, then but who is not listening? Who is not listening to the ego? Like we can go with the mind and the ego, but to let go of it. No, but my question, Bert, is uh -huh. who is letting go, who is not listening, who is you have to take the responsibility for an identity that is doing that process. Mm -hmm. So the very sadhana that you do actually is a block in your own way. Mm -hmm. Because if you take up a minor identity, at least there's a solidity in that identity, and then it can turn away from the ego and turn to the truth. But when there is no identity, then it is like the mind is doing this, yes, the mind is doing this, but then everything is ego, because the mind is doing it all the time. So gradually what will happen, you'll take less and less, if you take that path and if you don't go into surrender, you gradually actually are in a conceptual gymnastics of the mind being something which is, which is on its own. It's not on its own, you make that decision. Well, I, I feel it can help sometimes, but mainly I feel in it like just relaxation, yeah. letting go, like just feeling what is present, it's, it brings me much more, or like usually. But, yeah. but what is present is what? Who is present? What is present? It's like just feeling natural, yeah. Or you can feel natural in surrender to the soul within. It's a very mm. natural state. That was the state you were in when you were born. Mm. It is the most natural state that your system knows in terms of, in the context of your spiritual existential experiences. Mm. Being in connect with the soul, not detaching from the ego, because when you're in connection with the soul, the ego doesn't have anything to say, it doesn't exist. It's a practice you have to try out, you know what I mean? If you try it out, if you actually sit down after the satsang, take a place, sit down for a moment and just say, okay, this action is coming from where? If I do my hair like this, for example, is this action coming from ego, is it coming from the truth? The system has to be in continuous vigilance and the interesting part is that you're doing something when you're vigilant, but gradually what happens is that the doer falls away, but in a state of surrender to the source, rather than the doer falling away in a state of dichotomy, so that when the banking has to be done, there's an experience of discomfort. I will practice it for sure. Try it out, it's an experiment. Mm -hmm. See, spirituality is a... It's an experimental field, there is no do's and don'ts. It's an experimental field. You, it is not a religion where I'm saying something and you have to believe me. It is exp experiment, see what I'm saying, if it holds or not.
See the difference between today and tomorrow if you've practiced it. It's not a matter of weeks. Suddenly there is solidity. I'm bert. Okay. Now, this action. I have to do the banking. Is it what the truth is saying? It's not what the truth is saying, I don't do it now. But there's no sense of discomfort, there's simply a sense of being in surrender. It's amazing actually. And gradually, as the years pass, Bert will dissolve. Neti Neti is there as an experience, it is not a practice. And this body just does in a state of joy. Sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, but generally yes. And then one day the last breath is taken and the body is dropped and Antar Atman becomes the Jeeva Atman again and moves into Atman according to what needs to be done after that. So it's a real way to live. It's not this spaced out stuff that is called spirituality, it's not spirituality, it is cosmic confusion. And people say it's a wonderful state to be in that state of the bliss and... Of course, it's nice to have a little bliss here and there, but the problem is that when you go into those bliss states and stay there very long, coming back into the body and into this world becomes that horrible and people behave so badly. We've had that time and again. Badly in the sense, they just don't know how to relate to this world anymore. And I'm seeing this a lot in young Neo-Advaitins. It is a very dangerous trend. It results in madness in some cases, it results in strange behavior, it results in a constant state of pain because of this dichotomy between the spiritual experience and the material reality. Spirit is matter. Spirit is matter, it's here and now. Otherwise one can leave the body and fly around as a spirit, no? If one is not dealing with the body, then why stay in the body? Leave. But that we can't do, so we have to be in this body and we have to... we have to revere it, actually. Thank you very much. You practice a little bit, see how it speaks to you. Yes. See what resonates, go, take steps, retract, try again, ex experiment with what's going on when you are just present, just here and now. Okay. And there is a sweetness in you, you know, it's a sweetness. Now, if that sweetness were to move into surrender, into sweet surrender, I mean, you've You've got a, an amazing life ahead of you. Thank you.